Are we allowed yep. now? <laughs> All right, well, yeah, as you can see, we've got a lot of equipment here that we don't know how to use. Yeah, we're, we're working on it. We're, we're, we're this close. We just can't quite, the sound's so, not quite good enough going to the computer. So uh, next week, hopefully, we'll have it figured out. But uh, good evening. Welcome to Jack Dawson's Racing Insider News with Scott Allen. We have no Reese Nobles. We have no um, buddy in the, in the audience tonight. <laughs> Joe Staples didn't show up, and he said he was coming tonight. Of course, we probably figure out why he's not here. Mm. But here we are, back at back at home again. And before we go any further, I know I don't know if Reese is watching. You won, okay? I got your message. I knew about it Sunday. <laughs> I just didn't say nothing about it. You won. Um, who, than, who did he? Have? Oh, he had Kozlowski. He had Kozlowski, mm. and uh, I, I'm not sure about who went where after that. So, well, Logano was second. All right, well, and Clayton, then, you finished second again. And then, where did Johnson finish? Johnson was in the top ten, but I think Harvick finished in the. In he the, was fifth it, or sixth. Yeah, I thought he had a chance at it till till the end there. So anyway, we're back to square one with that again. And Reese wasn't even here to gloat, but oh yeah, and Lord knows we were gonna hear it. Well, we were, yeah. I get this message, you know, Sunday. You saw it because you, mm -hmm. you, you know, I, t I told him he was on probation last week. <laughs> I don't know why he's pushing the issue. Huh? That's right. <laughs> no need, to, no need to do that. But um, it was a pretty good race Sunday. A lot of, a lot of passing. It was. Uh, Keselowski came back from being punished or penalized, and he come mm -hmm. all the way back. And them, them last few laps, Kyle Busch's car just went away and. Here he come. I mean, it, it, yeah, you know, it, it, I mean, everybody thought Kyle put left sides on it, which I, I was listening to Harvick and those guys, and they, Harvick was complaining that last run, he's like, we should have put four tires on, so this last pit stop, we could just put two on. Well, they still just put two on, but I don't think it worked as well no. um, as, as it did where, where Kyle, they just put left sides on and got out first. And, and I thought he was going to run away with it there for, for a few minutes. And then it was, it Brad. A, did you hear the, the, the take between Austin Dillon and Slugger Labby? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just shut and up it, it worked out for them guys, too, because I think they ended up with a top five yeah, or they ten. Went, yeah, they went a top ten. Um, so it was tenth. They finished tenth. And uh, but Slugger told him, you drive the car. <laughs> Yeah, and we'll take care of this in here. So. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Uh, Kyle Busch on Saturday with the um, uh, Xfinity race. Again, wins again. Nah. But that huge crash that um, we saw um, with uh, – shoot – I didn't watch the whole Xfinity race. Gosh, and something. Daryl Wallace and oh, Cody yeah. Ware. Cody Ware was sitting in the middle of the track. Daryl Wallace had nowhere to go. Just hit him. Uh, I felt pretty bad for him because that, I mean, that was a hard, well, hard hit. I'm looking at the finish order, and we actually had a pretty tight race. So Reese had first. Clayton had second place. I had third place, and, and, and you had sixth place, or seventh. Dang God, I finished last again. <laughs> I am not doing well this year. And and and, and Clayton just he just sent me something here. Um, yeah, I, I left my phone over there at the desk. So. Yeah, I feel like Harvard with all the second place finishes. Yeah. LOL. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're you're right. But uh, you you need to send us who you got for this week. Though. He did. He sent it to me. I for, I forgot now. Well, he said. Uh, Mark, I can't remember. He see he don't know have his phone and he's done forgot. That's over there. So Clayton, you need to send me who what your pick is for this week. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, they also had the big test at Mobile with the K and N cars. When mm -hmm. I understand that was a pretty good test. Um, I think Rainier's car was like one of the fastest down there. Um, mm -hmm. So they, that was that was the first race um, the first race at Greenville Pickens, and Lee Pulliam finished nineteenth. Dang. 
So he 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 made he tweeted after the race that he's ready for the bad luck to be over with. <laughs> so I mean, you know, you win two straight national championships, and, right? And then show up, hey, but I mean, so anyway, the season opener this week at South Boston, um, Twin One Hundreds, or I think it's Twin One Hundreds. Mm-hmm. Um, it's gonna be a big race this weekend. We're gonna have Mike Smith on in just a very few minutes. And we're going to talk to him about it. There are some rules changes down at South Boston this year that everybody's talking about. Oh, really? Um, the, you, you have to buy you, you, two tires every, every week instead of the four. Right, yeah, I do. Um, you got to do that. And then uh, the money you would set, the money that, that is being put aside there is going back into the driver fund for the championship. And we'll, we'll get Mike Smith to explain it all. I can't explain it exactly the way it's supposed to be explained, but um, supposedly there's more money involved there at South Boston this year. Um, they've done a lot of um, work there to get things together. Um, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about going to South Boston this weekend to see that. And, of course, one of our guests, Matty Ryan, is going to be racing at South Boston. Yeah, there's this a weekend. few late model guys from Langley. Uh, Butterbean, uh, Brandon Queen is going to be there. They tested last week. Um, they were one of the fastest ones out there last week. So look for good things coming from uh, and I think, Langley Speedway. And I think it's really good that uh, the the guys now. Mm-hmm. I, I saw I saw where uh, a lot of the rules packages for all the rate the mm-hmm. um, late models in the area are kind of going together now instead of what you can run here and what you can run there. And then they turn right around and uh, Dominion has a new tire manufacturer up there this this year. Yeah. Brings McCreary back. I haven't heard McCreary's name in a long time. We were running dirt at Southampton, and we were running McCreary's. Yeah. So That was a shocker. I I did not see that one coming. I don't know what to think of it. Uh, I did hear some guys from Langley Speedway that said that Langley actually brung them one year, and they told them, please don't bring them back next year, and and they done away with them. So Langley Speedway went to them in the early or late 2000s and, and had them one year, and, and they done away with them. And the, the, I, from what I was um, – what I'm hearing is the – underclasses under the late models they're going to the american racer tire mm-hmm. that's yeah. you know that's another another brand there it's an, i don't know if anybody else does anybody else run that in this area i don't not that i'm aware of so dominion's doing something completely different and their opener is um april 9th so uh like to get up there i'd like to get up there to see that too because i think that would be a good race but i don't know how it would yeah work it's gonna out. be last minute for them those guys to be ready um now what did you hear about the – has Hendrick got their plane back? <laughs> no, the plane is still – well, as of yesterday afternoon, it may be back today, I don't know. It was still in Memphis being checked out. Uh, that was the 8848 plane. Lee was on the plane before that. Okay. It had already come in because I was kind of, you know, after I read it, I kind of said, whoa. He was coming back because a lot, a lot of guys came back. A lot of them stayed out there, and uh, I'm thinking, well, they would probably wouldn't have two planes, but they did have two planes, the the five and the 24. Uh, they got to leave the track earlier because mm-hmm. you know the 24 didn't finish. And- <laughs> oh yeah, but you know he had a good run going though, and he's done well the last two races. And, and it was nothing he could have done. It but the really- parallels between Chase Elliott and Jeff Gordon. It's just about the same. That's mm-hmm. the way Jeff Gordon started out. He tore up a lot of cars mm-hmm. his first year. I've heard that, you know. 19 Chase may not, clips that they put on for Chase her. may not be as rough on the cars as, as he was mm-hmm. to start off with, but that's two. <clears throat> that's two cars. and um, Yeah, but he's ran well in all the races. That's the thing they say, you know, at least he's fast when he's in the race. Mm-hmm. And he, he's competitive. He made a mistake the other day. He said he made a mistake. I really I don't, don't know. know. I don't know if he could have avoided it. I don't know either. I don't. I don't see it. Um, I mean, the car was there. I don't know. He said he could have got off the brake and drove through it. I don't think so. I think the car was crossways and yeah, there just wasn't a, much he could they could do. So I just I don't see it. But anyway, now, now what about Kevin Harvick's fighter? Uh, winning, yeah, won, won the fight there. Um, 
the the UFC fight. Uh, did she tap out? Yeah, I think she did. I, I yeah, know. I think she got her in a headlock and, and, and got her to tap out. And this is a girl that just beat the beat Ronda Rousey. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, she, and, and a lot she of whipped, the, she, she plainly she whipped shit out of Ronda Rousey or whatever mm-hmm. I can't say her name, but uh, yeah. But it, it, you know, a lot of the a lot of the guys went to the race. I mean, went to the fight. Uh, they were there, mm-hmm. so a lot of the race teams went. And that was really interesting. I mean, you know, and I know Kevin Harvick was tickled to death to get a. You know, that's that's I think their first as a, a group <clears throat> since he started doing that. Yeah, I, a lot of people don't know, but Kevin Harvick has a a, a management company, mm-hmm. and he manages um, actually a couple of the drivers. Uh, I know Jeff Burton. He still manages him and and uh, negotiates his contracts. Um, I, I forget, but he has quite a few fighters. Um, I think one skateboarder. He's got some, some motorcycle guys. And he's um, got some music guys, too. Yeah, a couple of music guys. Yeah. He's got, I so, that. I mean, he's got a pretty good size management group. It's pretty interesting, I mean, you know, to be involved in stuff like that. That's, mm-hmm. you know, and it's completely different. KHI went from racing to Well, they already had the management. That. A little bit, but I mean, they put more emphasis on it now than what they had before. Yeah, yeah. They let uh, his PR guy. He he kind of runs all that stuff. And if you ever met him, <laughs> you don't know how he can, how he could run anything. He's a, of course, Kevin said he's like the most ADD person that you can meet. But so he put him in charge of everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't think of his name, but him and Kevin pick on each other. Pretty oh, hard. Lord. I mean, he's got a nickname. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm drawing a Mother blank. Function. Yeah, that's his, that's his Twitter handle. <laughs> Mother Function. Uh, I can't think of his, his name, but, uh, yeah. I mean, Kevin one time had, had dressed him up and took pictures and, and then bought a billboard on the side of 80 or 85. Or not, uh, what is it? It goes right across there, Kearns. From from Kernersville, that's forty. Forty, yeah, and put it on forty there. <laughs> and he always told us, "says I, you will not win. I can outspend you." Call from four two three nine. All right, here's one, our first guest. Four three zero. Good evening, welcome to Jack Dodson's Racing Insider News. Is this Mike? It sure is, buddy. How you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing well. Very good. I know you're getting excited about the season opener this week at South Boston. Give us a little insight on that. Well, it's uh, yeah, sort of got a look back to look forward. You know, we, we had a big practice session this weekend. And, uh, uh, had a 21, 22 cars there. Uh, we usually have a half dozen for test session. We had a lot of guys that haven't seen in a while. Uh, we got some new guys that were fast for the day. Uh, you know, we think some things that have happened in the off season, you know, with the rule changes, with uh, uh, with the purse structure uh, getting beat up, and that we're going to have a lot of cars. And uh, uh, with the t- new two tire rule, it, it's going to be some interesting racing with that. Well, can you explain that? Tire? I was trying to explain that earlier about the tire rule. What is the? Can you explain any of that? Exactly what sure, they're doing. It, it, it's, really, it's real simple. Uh, uh, for most of the season, and, and I'll come back and cover that most in a minute, for most of the season, uh, you can't buy the two tires every night. And uh, it's two you would use one from the week before. Uh, if those from the week before are bad, you don't get two out of a scuff bomb. But the first week, because we're running uh, twin 100 lappers, uh, uh, you get to buy four tires. Uh, and the second race, you get to buy four tires because we will have run, we will have put 200 laps on those tires, so it's not safe to put those guys back out there. After that, after okay. the second race, they will only be able to buy two tires a week until the uh, 4th of July race. We'll get to 4th of July because it's a longer race, they'll be able to buy four tires. You know, it, it's saving, uh, uh, I, I talked to drivers there, but they figure it's saving them about $500 a week. Uh, uh, that's good. And, and then, then with the, the uh, $500 guarantee to start, uh, oh, yeah. and, uh, uh, it's just allowed guys to spend more money in the offseason on their car. They, they, they could take money out of what would have been their entire budget and spend on the race cars. 
Well, you know what I saw? I saw that you're going to have Peyton Sellers is going to come back and run uh, there at South Boston this year. Uh, Stacy per year is going to be running there again uh, for, for the year. Uh, you you got some heavy hitters coming back there to run. Well, I've got Stacy Pierre coming back, and Stacy Compton's going to run a lot with us this year. Oh, really? Uh, uh, he's, he's, he's been running to announce a pretty good sponsorship deal uh, maybe this week that's going to send him at several tracks in the area. But uh, uh, he's going to run a fair amount with us. Peyton Sellers is coming back to run a full schedule this year. He's going to run the championship. Um, but, you know, the, the thing that, that Jack about the title that's going to make it interesting is, you know, we've got some pretty good guys that are moving up from the limited division, you know, because of, of the rule changes. They've been running with this two-tie rule forever. Mm. So uh, once we get into that time of the year where, you know, we get past the first couple of races and you run it on two new ties, two new ties, those guys are going to have it figured out. It sounds like it's going to be a great season out there. And, of course, South Boston has always been one of the premier tracks around. Um, and I, I've always loved going to South Boston. But I think this year the competition level is going to be really big. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think you'll probably have probably the most cars than you've had in a long time there at South Boston for a race. Well, we, you know, that was one of the things that management looked at was that, that we had to do things uh, that were going to be good cars back to make racing more exciting uh, uh, because bottom line you, you know if you don't have fans you can't race uh, 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 and uh, so all these things we've done we, we believe is going to you know have help with the fans and, and some stuff we've done just for the fans uh, uh, for, I saw it the first time Saturday on the grandstands uh, 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 yeah. we have grandstands now that are like Grandstands at Martinsville or, or Charlotte, uh, Bristol, anywhere you go. I mean, really, really nice uh, uh, seats with uh, uh, handrails up the steps. Uh, I mean, really impressive. And then, of course, after the season, we're, we're paving the racetrack. Uh, the uh, Mattiolis and the Dowsties uh, invested over a million dollars in that racetrack this year. Wow, okay. that's pretty good. That's a pretty good deal that you got that support that he's going to come in and make it run. I mean, you're, you're already one of the better tracks around, and then get to get all this other stuff is really cool. From a personal standpoint, how is it? How do you like being at the at the short track there at um, um, South Boston as compared to Martinsville? Well, yeah, you know, uh, I'm not there all the time. I'm, I'm uh, uh, yeah, I live in Bristol now. I live 238 miles away from South Boston, uh -huh. and, uh, uh, and I still go to Martinsville and started my new company. Uh, they were the first people to call me, and uh, I will stay with those folks as long as I'm breathing, as long as they're happy. That said, I, you guys know how much I love the big late model race at Martin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I love, I love weekly racers. I love what they do. Uh, I told my wife when I got back home Sunday morning about how excited I was just walking into the race track Saturday. So, I, yeah, I won't be there every weekend, but it's... In heart, I am there every weekend. I, 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 I get excited about it. I love it. But, you know, it's, it's, I've, I've been very fortunate, guys, since I left Martinsville. And then to put this week to base, I've, I've got, uh, uh, I've only got one or two little racing accounts, but I've, I've got plenty of other good business, uh, working a lot of nonprofits. got plenty of hours. A lot of people think I retired. I didn't retire. I just <laughs> have to be with my wife. She lived in Bristol. I lived in Martinsville. Uh, uh, I love this pace of life I have now. I, I can work at 6 o'clock in the morning at 10 o'clock at night. But, you know, racing is in my soul. It's in, in my blood, and, and I'll always be doing some of it. And it, it's different. It's different than, than, than doing it at a tough level. That's for dang sure. I, I mean, you got you got to, I think, you got to work a little harder. You know, there's no such thing as a TV uh, contract. Uh, I mean, you got to work hard for every dollar back for the gym. You know, we had we had Buzzy Rudiman on not too long ago, and he says once you get it in the blood, the only way you can get it out is, is die it out. No, that was Schrader. Die right. away with it. You know, that's right. For me, when, when I, I came to work at Martin's Report in 1977, I'd never seen a race car in my life. Didn't even want to go to the track. The first time I heard, heard them 
crank and it was a modified ball nineteen seventy seven and they came off the full turn. I was hooked. I mean that was it right there. <laughs> well, South Boston has such a great history uh, of things going on there. What are some of the bigger events that you've got going I know you probably got some touring events coming in. Tell us a little bit about that, too. Well, you know, we've got the uh, um, modified tours coming in a couple times this year. Uh, mm-hmm. Modifieds are always awesome in South Boston. Well, I think modifieds are awesome anywhere. Yeah. We've got the past series coming in this year uh, yeah. once, maybe twice. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but... Uh, um, yeah, we got a big Fourth of July event, fireworks, and, 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 and all that cool stuff. But, but you know, the, our our big emphasis is is on our our week, our guys that are there week in week out. Uh, uh, you yeah, know, yeah, we love bringing the uh, the touring series in, but we've all, always got some local guys who are racing uh, uh, also. Good stuff. Yeah, those, those those are the ones that fans come see week in week out. Now, do you think the the two tire rule? I mean, I, this is my opinion. I think it's going to help the racing and probably make it a little tighter, um, and maybe bring some new winners in. Because, I mean, you got to be really good at tire management when we're talking about you know two tires versus four tires. Well, and, and here's where the tire management is going to be tricky for people that haven't done this. It isn't just managing your tires this week. You've got to be thinking about those tires. You got to use them next week too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Mm-hmm. You know, it, and, and again, that's where the limited guys who've been doing this and that are moving up are, are, are going to have an advantage. And the guys like uh, Bobby McCarty, I did a press release on this week. He, uh, he's an old, not an old guy. He started on the had a lot of dirt. Likes to hang a race car out. So on, on old tires, it, it, he's going to be pretty good. You know, then the guys, uh, 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 you can see a lot of new winners at, at South Boston Speedway mm-hmm. this year, I think. Uh, and, and you're going to see a lot of close races. You know, because uh, uh, you know you're not going to be able to to uh, tire people to death, money people to death. You're right. Right? The, the the playing you hear that all the time. It's sort of a trite phrase, but, but the playing field is very very level. Mm-hmm. Now, with the situation we have down here towards Hampton and Virginia beaches, we're not sure of the status of Langley Speedway. We understand you're going to get a lot of the Langley guy, Langley folks down there this weekend for their. For your first race, I think that's a pretty big yeah. deal. Saw that double nickel Mark Works and uh, Duncan Donuts on the back of it. Talked to him for a long time. Uh, C. E. Bop was that was that yeah, year, so, so uh, uh, I'm sure there was some that weren't practicing. Uh, uh, you know that, that will come up. Uh, uh, and, and yeah, we we hate it for the fans uh, uh, down 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 in Langley. We hate it for for Bill and those guys. Because you know Langley has so much tradition, and and, and you know we need race tracks, and we we need racers, and, and that's a good race track. The good mm-hmm. fans are good racers, and I just hope to goodness they can get something resolved before long. Yeah. But until they do, we love them. Their drivers, and their fans, make a trip up to see us. Well, I, I know one that's going to try to get up there this weekend. That's me. Um, one of the um, one of our guests that's coming on. Um, Maddie Ryan. Maddie, Maddie Ryan is going to be up there this weekend for her first late model race. So, oh, cool. So we want to be up there. To, I, I want to be up there to see that. So I, I think that's a big deal for her first late model. But yeah, uh, and I think Butterbean will be there. Um, Brennan yeah, Queen. Yeah, right. he, he was. He, he tested uh, I on think, Saturday. Yeah, I think uh, he did well there Saturday. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be there. My wife had some pretty invasive back surgery yesterday, and. Mm. and uh, I'm gonna stay around the homestead. It'll probably be a couple weeks before I get back down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'll be uh, 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 following it all on Twitter and talking with Colin Kathy Rice and uh, uh, keep your ears to the ground and see what's going on. Well, Mike, we appreciate your time yeah. tonight. We know you got you got a lot going on. I know you stepped in for Kathy because she couldn't be on the show tonight, but uh, we really appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll see you down at South Boston pretty soon. We'll see you sooner or later, okay, guys? All right, All right man. We'll talk you, to you later. Thanks for your time tonight. All right, man. Take care. Take care. I'll tell you, now, see, he explained the tire rule better than I did, but I think that's going to be very interesting. It is. I think it's going to make for some good racing, I think. And then, you know, to talk about the money that the teams are saving, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they start coming out of the woodwork now. Well, the team, not, but, but Compton it's per year, all these. Well, I mean, Stacy Compton. I mean, he's ran Cup trucks. He still. I don't. Th- I don't know if he still owns a truck team or not. No. No, he's out. Of, he's out of truck business. Mm-hmm. But um, um, but I mean, not only is 
are they going to save $500 from the tire bill? They're also getting a minimum of $500 to start. <laughs> I mean, that's a that's a that's, that's a pretty big that's a, swing. That's a big deal for you know for a late model driver. That, that's a that's a probably I, I don't know what they got before, but I'd imagine a couple hundred bucks would go to five. So that's probably a five hundred dollar positive savings on the weekend. And plus, or seven fifty because the tires themselves are probably about five hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean they're they're going to be in a better situation, and that's the reason why you have the guys. I think Lee Pulliam said he's going to go down there and run mm -hmm. uh, most of the races there. Um, so you're going to have some major competition there. Well, you, you are. I mean, and then it, if, it'd be it, for somebody like from far away, they would be willing to go and run there because they're going to save some money. They're going to save not have to buy two tires. It's going to pay $500 to start. That's that's a thousand bucks right there. So I mean, that's that's a big deal for for a team like Matty Ryan, who's that they're going to go down there and run this mm -hmm. weekend. Um, Let's just, I mean, we don't want to see this happen, but let's just say something doesn't materialize at Langley Speedway. These people have to find a place to race. South Boston is one of the places that I would rather see a Matty Ryan at South Boston than I would see Matty Ryan at Southside. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. She'll, her learning curve will be a whole lot better at South Boston compared to Southside. Right, you'll, you'll race better quality people um, and cars and, and, and... Of course, I know Dominion is Dominion is in the... In the in the crosshairs there too, but well, it is, and a lot of people are gonna go to the Dominion. I don't know how they're gonna like this tire combination that they're gonna run at Dominion. And Dominion's a super nice place, but it's gonna be hard to say how it's gonna fare out. Yeah, it, 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 and if you go to Dominion, let's say Maddie and her team goes to Dominion, they've got to buy four of the McCreary tires right. just to race there. Where I'm thinking it's the same tire that between Langley and South Boston. Because Bill and part, I yeah. talked about that one time before. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm wondering if, you know. Well, we know Shane Laws, you know, they all tried to work, try to have some similar rules around so that cars could come from Langley Speedway and go to South Boston or, or, or go to Robertsonville or Southern National and those places. And I think that's great because, you know, back when we ran late models, it was like, well, you'd have to change this to go run there or change that to go run there. And I got to be a pain and people didn't really want to want to do it. All right, we have a question here from uh, Clayton, our friend there. What if you crash and lose or blow more than two tires? Can you buy? That's where the officials will come into play. They'll say, okay, yeah. you, you, you did. But what he said just a minute ago was if you your tires are bad, from the first week, you can only get scuffed tires from the scuff. They're going to have what they call, he said, a scuff shed. Yeah, so they're going to be slightly used. Right, so you're going to have to use, you're going to have to use those tires compared to a new tire. Uh, you'll get your two news, but you won't be able to get all four new tires. Right, and, and the one positive thing that people don't realize, it's not like Cup Series that they run a really soft tire on the left side and, and a tire on the right side. Like models, we run the same compound all the way around. The left sides don't wear nearly as much as the rights do. So some some guys I know that used to just buy two tires back in the day at Langley, they would actually flip the the lefts and put them on the rights and buy new ones and put them on the left. And that and that's how they uh, yeah, that's they how, ran their. And that's how you did it on dirt. Oh really? That's how you did it on dirt. If you 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 know I would I would run. I, well, what we would do is we go all four. We go around. I would put one brand new one in the on the left rear mm -hmm. and just move them around. And usually, I could go back to one of them tires, you know, if, if necessary. Right? Necessary because you don't burn them up like you do on asphalt. Mm -hmm. But you could go in there and they throw that stuff on the track. The, the what they call it, uh, calcium they mm -hmm. put on the racetrack. Then it would it would it would it would, it would get rubber on it just like, mm -hmm. asphalt. like asphalt. Yeah, yeah so. Um, but yeah, and I, I don't know if they're going to compound or not compound impound the tires or not. I, mean, I meant to ask that, but uh, but it'll, it'll be interesting. And you know, you're talking about the other thing about people maybe wanting to go to Dominion. How many people are going to say, "Well, that's got a different tire"? And then we have to figure out that whole tire deal. Yeah, I mean, you know, to me, that's it's kind of going against the grain a little bit. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be a little different in, in, in McCreary. Does not, I mean they have a they have a huge history in dirt, mm -hmm. 
but they do not have a big, a big history of asphalt. asphalt. Right. So, you know, a lot of people are not going to know the tire. They're not going to know how to and, handle and it. And all the tires are not the same size either. I, I know for us, when we went to like Wilkesboro or Martinsville and ran, you had to run Goodyear's. And the Goodyear's were much taller. The circumference on them were much bigger. So we would have to lower the car down an inch or two to get back down to ride height. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think those things will play an effect too, opposed to uh, Dominion to run in Langley Speedway or, or what have you. That's pretty, you know, this is pretty interesting how, to me, they just, that to me, they, they, they've, they've put themselves a little bit away from what everybody else is doing, and that's going to, that yeah, may hurt them a little bit. I, I think so. I mean, I, I think so. I think, uh, the director of competition up there at Dominion, the race director, or whatever you want to call him, they, they all need to sit down and, and think about it. But, you know, well, they're smarter than we are. So, well, you know, they, that, that, they know what true. they're doing. I mean, and and that I'm sure, saying a whole lot. But, but I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of other mm -hmm. things that are coming into play there. But this weekend will be fun to go to South Boston. I mean, everybody's been itching to go to the racetrack. We've been out of the, away from the racetrack for since – the fall or the winter, however yeah. you want to say it. Uh, been a long time. So I'd imagine there's going to be a lot of cars to show up at, at South Boston. I think so, too. I mean, see, Falk, he hasn't been racing a whole lot, but he's digging his car back out. All right, we're going to call Maddie Ryan. She's supposed to call us, but I'm going to call her. It's time for you to wake up and, and call the show. <laughs> Maddie? Hi. Yes. <laughs> we're, Sorry we're, about that. We, we literally just um, stepped out the door from uh, shutting the shop up. We, um, we're loading the car up to okay. head out this weekend. Yeah, I, I, I understand you're going to be at South Boston for your first race. How's that going? How you, are you looking forward to it? I am looking forward to it. We're really excited. It's going to be a... An experience, let's just say that. <laughs> I, 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 are you nervous about it? I mean, I can't imagine being your first late model race. I mean, for me, I, I, it would be a little nerve wracking. But I mean, that's going to be with anything. I mean, it is a little bit more nerve wracking to be due to this. I mean, I literally just saw the track for the first time last weekend, so um, we'll be doing this some testing this week and then racing. Um, two 100 lap races on Saturday, so yeah, it is a bit nerve wracking, but um, I'm excited all in all for it. So I'm uh, ready. You, now, now, explain to me, explain to me how you feel about the two 100 lap races. I mean, you haven't done uh, if any 100 lap races before. How you feel about that? Um, the most uh, I am. I mean, it is um. It is going to be a bit of an experience just because, I mean, the most laps I've run in a race is 40 coming from the Pro 6, um, and that's when we doubled up on one of our races, but I don't know. I mean, it is going to be a bit, but I've been, I mean, as y'all as y'all probably know, I mean, I'm very physically active, so, I mean, my endurance is really, is really, well, is really good, so, I mean, I'm not too worried about it. Um, I know I'll be, I know I will be tired, but I'm ready for it. So, so what Man. are you, what are you looking for? Let, let's let's just let's play the let's play the game where what would you be satisfied with when you get to South Boston this weekend for your first race? What what do you want? What do you want to accomplish? I would like to at least be in the top fifteen, um, mm -hmm. which is going to be. Which is going to be a challenge because um, we've heard there's there may be almost uh, thirty plus cars there. So I mean, I would like to run about um, I would like to run in the top fifteen and um, you know just keep the car in one piece is my goal. Um, go out there get the seat time, but uh, top fifteen is what we're aiming for. Now you we just had we just had Mike Smith on from South Boston. He was just on the show a few minutes ago, and they've got some heavy hitters coming in there. This year at South Boston, you got Peyton Sellers and Stacy Perrier, Stacy Compton. 
uh, Lee Pulliam, all those guys are coming in for the for the big races. How, how is it, how's that going to feel? How's it going? How are you going to feel running against those guys? I mean, it definitely is like I mean, it is a, it's definitely a neat experience um, getting to run against all those um, all those guys. Like I said, it's going to be a neat Well, you do have some laps around the racetrack, though. Is it just the one Pro 6 race that you've run out there? Oh, no. We've never run it. I've never run I it. Thought, so oh, I that's right. You know? for the first time that's right. I, I, was, I was thinking uh, Southern, uh, Southern National. National. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, and, I mean, yeah, getting to, I mean, I drove on bank tracks before, but nothing to this extreme. I mean, it's just a little different. Have you been? You say you're going to test. Where are you going to be testing at this week? Down at South Boston. Yes, down at South Boston, we'll be testing. Oh, okay. All right. Now, is Mark helping you any with getting ready for this week? Yes, Mark is um, helping me, and extremely, he's helping us a lot. And I mean, we really do appreciate it because I mean, Mark's been coaching me with uh, driving and whatnot since I was first started in bandos. Um. So Mark's been with me for quite some time, um, but uh, yes, he is helping us, and um, he'll be out there uh, t- um, the same day we will. He'll be helping me a lot, and as well as uh, Wayne Wyatt's going to be spotting for me this weekend, and he's going to be helping me with some driving skills and everything. So, all right, now, now tell me how tell me how Tracy's doing. I know he's a, he's a, <laughs> is he walking in circles and all kinds he's of stuff a, right a, now. He's a more a pair of shoes out. Now I'm not going to ask about your mom. I know, she, you know, I know she's going to probably be pretty nervous. Mm-hmm. My mom is going to be nervous the day of. Right now, she's she's doing her best to keep cool, but y'all know how she is. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she makes her own laps in the infield. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, it ought to be it ought to be interesting. I, I'm I'm really hoping everything works out good. We're gonna to try to be up there Saturday so we can see your race. We want to, we want to be there for this. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we'd love for y'all to come. You know mm-hmm. you you know you're one of my favorites. I you know I ain't speaking for Scott, but you are one of my <laughs> favorites. But um, I, I I got to be up there, I, and I, I'll go up there and I'll hold Tracy's hand or something, make sure he don't <laughs> you know get lost or something. Yeah, somebody's gonna to need to come hold his hand. <laughs> All right, do you have the same guys working with you this year? We do. So that's good that you got the same people with you. You're you're gonna be pretty comfortable in that. Yeah, definitely. Um, most, and it does help because um, most of my crew is family, and um, we have one family friend, but uh, he is more like family. So I mean, I'm definitely comfortable with who I'm working with and everything. This will actually be um, my first time working with Wayne this year. So, and at all, um, I've never worked with Wayne before. But I mean, I trust him. I, um, yeah, I mean Wayne's been around a long time, and he's got a lot. He's got experience. I mean, he's got a lot of knowledge, and mm-hmm. um, worked, I mean, he's worked. I mean, just watch your language. We had a lot of recommendations from different people um, recommending Wayne for this weekend and everything. So I mean, definitely Not, trust him in what he's doing. Well, tell Tracy he never called me. So <laughs> you're better oh. off. Jeez, did we not call you? You never called me, so I mean, I'm a little upset. You tell your, you tell Tracy, you I'm must, upset about that you too. Must have, you must have missed our call. <laughs> it's just, you know, he did get a new phone. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, that must be what it is. You must have, I mean, I thought we left a voicemail, but you know. 
It won't set up yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see. I can, she don't even play that good. I mean, you know, she's not even, she's not even good at she's that. She's not a good liar, huh? <laughs> she, oh, we forgot. You know. so, so is Wayne going to help you all year or most of all year? What was that? Is Wayne going to a uh, spot and try to help you most of the year, or is this just kind of this weekend? Um, we are, right now, we are just testing it out, but, um, I mean, if things work out and he would like to, I mean, that's all right with us. <laughs> now, is there a reason you don't let Tracy do it? Um, I have always heard the saying that, the spotter should have no personal relationship <laughs> with the driver. I, w- I would agree um, with that. And it is better that way, and Tracy and I would <laughs> go at it on the radio. I feel like we've done it before, so, I mean, yeah. it's just a... I, I agree with that, and I think that's stubbornness a... stubbornness with us sometimes, but... um. yeah. I think that's a good thing, honestly, because I, I, I agree. I think sometimes a parent shouldn't spot for their own child. Uh, I, I don't understand how anybody, even the, I don't, I have people tell me sometimes that their parents spot for them, and I'm like, how? <laughs> no, right? I don't get it. Like, how? <laughs> well, now, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask a question, and I'm, I'm going to be real serious about this. Um, what about, let's just say, let's play devil's advocate for a minute and say, Langley Speedway does not open this year, which we're not, we don't think that's going to happen, but have you all crossed that bridge of where you're going to run after that, if, if, it, if that did happen? Yeah, we definitely have crossed that bridge, and that is the reason that we are running. I mean, we definitely do have our faith in Langley Speedway, for sure, and our 100% support, and that is where we'll be running if, if and when it does open. But um, that is just in case anything happens, um, we are backing ourselves up, and we will – I mean, that's the main reason we're running – for the next two weekends is because of the fact that in case anything does happen, we're still in the point at South Boston. So that's where we'll be running if Langley doesn't open, but we we're staying hopeful. Well, I mean, I, I think that's, it's going to, it's going to work out that it's going to open up, but everybody has to have that plan in their mind of what may happen. And I was just kind of wondering what you, what you got, what you guys were going to do because uh, Scott, yep, we'll be running um, at South Boston if so. Yeah, Scott. Um, Scott and I were just talking about it earlier, and, and and you know I'm glad you picked South Boston because I would hate to, for you to go to a, a place like Southside or even Dominion right now because uh, Dominion's got a whole new tire concept going on up there. I just, uh-huh. I, I think you'll be a whole lot better off at South Boston. Yeah, That's- we think so too, and definitely. Um, Cost-efficient wise, the two-tire rule and the 500 mm. to um, start the race is definitely, yeah, definitely um, more of a favorable um, decision. But uh, we definitely hope to run a time or two at Dominion this year. It would definitely be um, a good experience to me for me to get um, seat time on that track and everything. But yep, Dominion or uh, um, South. South Boston is where we'll primarily be running if Langley doesn't open. Now, are you going to try to run some other tracks besides Dominion? Or are you just going to try Dominion, to concentrate Langley, on the Langley, Southside, um, hopefully Southern National, maybe East um, East Carolina. It yeah. just, um, right now, it just depends on scheduling, really. Yeah. All right, now you're going to have to let me know your schedule when you get it all planned it's, out. It's in that voicemail. Oh, it's in the voicemail? <laughs> I didn't get the voicemail, so... Uh, <laughs> Tell Tracy he's got to send me another one <laughs> to let me know what your schedule is going to be like because, uh, you know, I'd like to come to some of those races when you go off to other tracks and stuff and see how you do. Yeah, we'd love you to. All right. All right, well, we're going to let you get back to work on your car or go back to sleep or whatever you were doing before we <laughs> – She's going back to working out. I mean, I see her posing all these damn posts of working out at the gym, and I'm like, damn, my fat ass needs to get up and go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> but she's making me look bad. Well, she, she, we went to the before I went to the shop. <laughs> she, she, she's the uh, uh, our Danica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's going to be doing yoga now. Yeah, she's going to be doing yoga soon. <laughs> I could not do yoga. I have no coordination or balance whatsoever. Yeah, okay, well, we'll, we'll, let, we'll let it go at that. All right, Maddie, we'll, well see good you. Good luck. We'll see you Saturday. I think we'll be down there. Yeah, I think we're going to try to make it down there. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you Saturday. Okay, sounds great. All, All right, right talk to you, you later. All right, see you all then. All right, bye. bye. 
Hey, man, for her to go for a 15th place goal, I was thinking 20th would be a big accomplishment for somebody that's a, a rookie in the late model series. But, I mean, I, I got to give you prop, give her props. I mean, you got to go big. You know? Go big or go home. Right. And, yeah. and, and hey, I'm telling you, if she could accomplish a top 15, I would take a top 15 against the cars that are going to be there this weekend because you're going to talk on some top quality teams this weekend. It's going to be at, hard. At it's, you know, it's, it, gonna be, there's going to be some guys there. There's going to be a lot of cars. I, 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 will, I meant to ask Mike what was the car count for this weekend, and she was saying 30 to 35, and that sounds reasonable with no other races are going nope. on right now. It's the first of the season. Everybody's antsy about – I mean, see Fox knocking the dust off his 40 car and bringing it. They went and tested last weekend. You know, Butter being, you know, the, the 55, Maddie's going to be there. I heard um, the boy from Hickory. Drives Junior's car. Oh, uh, uh, what's his Josh name? Barry. Josh Barry. I hear he's coming. I mean, that, that, I heard he that he was planning on coming up there for this weekend. But you know, that's that that's kid deserves deal. an Xfinity ride. I, I think so too, and he, he's done very well. I don't know if he's going to get it. It seems like they get that one little shot, and if they don't get a boost, it's like. And 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 seeing we still talking about my phone, which is. <laughs> Um, but I mean, we're, it's going it, to, South Boston always has some good racing. Yeah. And it's, it, yeah, it's like I said earlier, I mean, they, they've got a, they've got a big history and, uh, anyway, he's supposed to call me. So, uh, I'll tell you what, let's just call him. I seem to be doing good at that tonight. <laughs> Mr. Silo Speedway. Yeah. Well, we got all kinds of wires down in front of our thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a wake up call for Mr. CJ Faison. Are you available? Shit. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I wish I was in bed. That'd be pretty nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, what you guys up to? we're up to anything. Welcome to the show. We're glad to have you on again. Uh, basically, what we want to know is we want an update on your racetrack. How's everything going up there? Uh, everything's going great. We actually just placed the barriers in the walls up today, uh, well, at least down the back stretch, and we got a grade about another degree and a half of banking off the top uh, just to make sure the, the barriers are set right and not, you know, leaning into the track. So, um, and for the most part, we've just been working really hard and diligently, and we've got uh, clay coming in, we've got the walls, we've got fence, light poles. I mean, everything kind of happens this week and next week, and uh, it's an exciting time up there for sure. What When's the, op when's the opening weekend? Uh, projected date is April 15th. Okay. Uh, we feel pretty confident and secure that we can, you know, accomplish that and make it happen, but... Um, you know, if we have to start a week later, uh, I don't really think any of the racers are going to complain after they see the facility that we're building for them. So. Now, where, where did Silo, where, where did the name come from? Well, my dad and I were back there um, after he decided and he had this crazy idea he wanted to build a racetrack. So we went back there and we were, you know, just looking at the area and researching and measuring out, you know, what we can do for it. And we have a big silo on our property. Mm, and okay. I said, you know what, Pop, we just ought to just put a circle of dirt around the silo and call it Silo Speedway. And after that, it just kind of stuck. So um, <laughs> it's just, it was, it was turned into a, from a joke to a reality, pretty much has happened. I mean, the silo is not in the center of the track, but that's just kind of how we got the name. We were back there joking around. And there's been a lot of research that's gone into this racetrack from uh, the type of clay, the materials to the, uh, length and distance and width that this thing needs to be. So, I mean, it's got 50 foot straightaways and 60 foot turns and it's high bank. So, I mean, you can't really ask for too much more out of a racetrack. No, no, it's a whole lot of corners and a whole lot. I mean, that's that's that's, that's going to be a lot of fun. That sounds like a fun racetrack to drive. It is, and it's a D-shaped oval. And uh, you know, I okay. think about 95 percent of your dirt track aren't even D-shaped. They're just you know standard oval or you know a consistent circle, but. This is going to be really where it separates, you know, the good drivers from, you know, just your so-so drivers. I mean, a guy who can adapt to two different corners is obviously going to prevail, prevail with the race. So uh, I'm excited for that aspect, just seeing, you know, how these cars are going to handle getting around there. I mean, I mean I've never even raced a D-shaped over dirt track before. Right. 
Now, how how did you come up with the of what how, what kind of dirt you're going to put in there? Because I mean, I I didn't I never raced dirt, so I, watching some of the stuff I've seen where there's so many different types of dirt and clay and where you go and what you would do, and it, it, there's a lot more to it than what people think there is. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you just go on Google.com and just put in clay. Uh, you know, you really got to research what you're going to put down. You know, first and foremost, there's a lot of racetracks that don't uh, accept clay and they have rocks or shells in them mm-hmm. or it's really like a, a sandpapery type of grit to it um we're looking for that pure clay because that's what you know builds a berm puts race and action back in the track and the biggest thing that you're going to look at when you you know research clay is um uh, you can find it a dime a dozen but you really got to go see it for yourself feel it touch it you know moisturize it see what it does and uh, you know we're getting uh, we're getting our clay from an undisclosed location. We kind of call it Clay Fifty One. Uh, <laughs> we feel pretty confident that this stuff's going to be really neat to, to race on. So it's going to be like a surface of no other, that's for sure. Um, but the, you know the natural ground that we have underneath it, the clay, uh, is not that bad. But we want to add to it, you know, make sure that the racing surface is best prepared for these racers, and you know not only the racers but the fans. I mean, you go to a lot of dirt tracks around the area here, and it just gets so dusty, and you leave with just dust all over your face. You yep. just feel like, you know, why in the world did I just go into this race? Well, we don't want our fans to feel that way. We don't want to be like, man, that was some good race in action, and wow, I don't have to take a shower after I get home. So, right. um, that's, it's all important, and you really have to, uh, you have to do your research, you know. And, and the clay, we feel pretty confident it's going to work. But I could be wrong. It's Mother Nature, you know what I mean? It can change at any time. But um, we're just going to try it out. You know, you, you can't fault us for our first year being out here. And, you know, typically you hear about dirt tracks closing down, not really starting up. So, um, right. you know, it, it's going to be a it's gonna be a gamble, you know what I mean? But uh, sure. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. All right, now let's talk about your racing. Now, you, you got your sprint cars ready to go. I saw you had another guy that's come on that's going to be driving for you. Give us a little update on all that. Oh, uh, well, Ty Short has uh, joined CJ Face Motorsports for, you know, this season. and um, He's got himself a car that I feel, that, you know, is capable of winning a lot of races. Um, it's a used car uh, where mine is brand new. Um, but, I mean, that really doesn't matter with these cars. I mean, they, both the chassis are exactly the same. They're identical. Um, you know, we're sharing all of our information and all of my technology that I have in my race shop. So, I mean, I've got everything from shock dynos and spring raiders and, uh, you know, any kind of mechanical and laser devices that you need. So uh, I'm kind of excited to transition all the technology that I've learned from asphalt over to dirt. Whether it helps or not, we'll see this season. But, you know, I'm going to at least give it a shot. Um, you know, I kind of tapped Ty because he was he was uh, always been a good friend of mine, always kept up with my racing. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that have supported me, but there's been a lot of people that have, you know, wanted to see me fail at the same time. And I can honestly say I've raced against Ty a handful, like a handful of times, and the kid has always been keeping up with me. He's always been a great friend to me. So, um, you know, it's more or less a friendship deal than anything else, and that's why, you know, I want to help him out. He's just a really good guy. Well, that's cool. So have you got your schedule set up of what kind of races other than Silo are you going to be racing? Yeah, I've got, uh, man, I think I'll be racing about once or twice a month at Silo, but for the main part, I'm going to be racing at Action Track USA up in Coast Town, Pennsylvania. And then I'm going to follow the USAC National Tour mm-hmm. um, and race at Silo. So all together, there's a grand total of 36 races that I'll hopefully be running. Um, you know, you can count some out for rain or, you know, cancellations here and there. But I'm just excited to be back behind the wheel for a full season and something. You know, I haven't done this in a couple of years. And uh, to be back at it and to build the dirt track and stuff like that, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on on the plate, but we have the proper people managing it and, uh, you know, running facility like it should be. So uh, that's the exciting part, being able to race and, um, you know, be a part of such a great thing as building a racetrack. Well, you know, I was I was on your Periscope the other day when you were uh, Periscoping riding up the road. <laughs> I was trying to get you a ride with Godovic for the uh, Dover race. <laughs> yes, Godovic and I, we've talked a couple of times, and uh, I think that's something we need to, you know, hammer out here soon because I, I know I'm capable of winning Dover, and it definitely owes me one. We've I mean, come four times in a row almost winning this thing and just something crazy mechanical happens that's out of our control but I mean, that's a part of racing and you know the perseverance that we're going to show when we come back to Dover at some point uh, 
and tell her get a day off, and it's going to just be, you know, a heartwarming feeling for not only me, but all my family and fans as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, I I've been trying. I pressed him that day while we were while we were on there, and I didn't get no answer. I heard I heard him ask you to give him a call, or you asked him to give a call, or somebody to give a call to one of, one or the other. So I, I was hoping there was something you'd be able to tell us. Yeah, well, I, hopefully maybe by the next time I get on this show, uh, I'll have a little bit more to tell you guys about that. But um, you know, for right now, I you know I started my own dirt team, and I'm going full bore with that, and I'm, I'm really excited. I mean, I'm in the shop tonight. You know, just a couple of technicalities on the car, and uh, you see what I can do to make this thing faster. So, I mean, uh, I got to give a huge shout out to Rich Tobias. He's actually the guy who who sacks speedsters, and um, the guy is just incredibly smart on everything he does on these cars. Um, and he also owns Action Track USA. Him and Doug Rose, and both of those are great guys to work with. They've kind of helped us through the track building process, and uh, they build great race cars. So it's kind of a win-win. I can bounce questions off of them anytime, and you know you got to respect those two guys. They've been in the sport a very long time, and mm-hmm. both of them are you know they'll lose more information and knowledge than I'll ever know. So <laughs> right. it's kind of cool to pick their brains. All right, man. Well, we're going to get back with you again in a little while. Hopefully, we're going to get up there to, bit to Silo and see the racetrack and uh, hang out with you for a little while. Absolutely, man. Love that. You guys should uh, air a show live there. That'd be pretty cool. That's what we yeah. want to do. We want to try to do that. So uh, we'll come up with, We'll come up there, and we'll let you know when we, when we get that, get ready to head that way. Sounds great. Let's coordinate it. All, All right, right, man. I'll Thanks, talk CJ. to you again. Good luck to you, man. Thanks, guys. All right, man. Bye. How in the world is a kid like that? I mean, I like the guy. I really yeah. do. Yeah. He's cool as hell. But, you know... He's got auto auction. He was going to pick up cars that day. I, was like, <laughs> I, I watched it later. And, you know, it, it's just unbelievable to me. Yeah. And uh, He's a funny kid. All right, let's see. I think we may actually, we may actually have, we may actually get Shelby, Black- Shelby Blackstock on it. I'm just putting them in here so I don't lose them. Hello? Is this Shelby? Yes, it is. All right, this is Jack Dotson. How you doing, man? And welcome to our show. Jack Dotson's Racing Insider News with Scott Allen. Glad to have you on the show, man. We finally got it together. Yeah, seriously. Thank you very much for having me. All right, man. Well, first of all, just give us a little background on how you got started into racing. I mean, you've got a... You've got a family history into other things, but you, you how did you get into racing? It kind of just was uh, one of those things where, yeah, I mean, my family's always been in the music business, and uh, that's kind of what I was I was bred for, and it was just one of those things that wasn't really hitting the switch. It always just felt, I mean, I've been working on the road as a roadie uh, for a different couple of different uh, acts since I was 10 years old to about 19, and it never really felt uh, like it fully completed the, like a, kind of what my passion was and one thing led another was at college wasn't having anything I wanted to major in and wasn't super happy and kind of racing found me and went to the Bondurant Driving School and was just kind of like a one-off thing and did extremely well there actually some teams uh, sent, sent their drivers back for a refresher course and uh, was faster than them and they kind of told me to move up the ranks go to Skip Barber and it kind of just spiraled out of control from there yeah, you uh, and I understand you, you're you're with Andretti Autosport and running the uh, Indy Light Series this year. Correct. Yes, I'm in. Uh, I drive the number fifty one Andretti Autosport uh, IL fifteen Indy Lights car and, uh, in the Mazda Ridge Indy. Well, have you done any other racing other than the, the than the, the Indy Lights and anything like that? Yeah, I've, I've raced in uh, what you see of is the uh, the Grand Am Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Series, which is now is. Uh, ran under the banner of IMSA. I ran in that with uh, Roush Performance and uh, Fall White Motorsports and a Mustang uh, 302 Boss R and a, also a BMW M3. So I've, I've raced a couple other stuff, raced over in Europe, uh, done some club stuff here. So I've, I've kind of done a little bit of everything. So did, did you were you down in Daytona for the 24 hours this year? Uh, this year I was not. I did not get a ride this year. So I kind of just stayed home and just trained and got ready for uh, this next season. Now, you just had a test this past weekend or whatever, uh, the last week or whatever. How did that go for you? It was uh, it went up and down. We, uh, 
we have a still, uh, we're kind of still progressing from last season. Last season was an extremely rough year. Uh, one car effort from Andre, and a lot of stuff was out of our control, so, and the car wasn't uh, fully in spec. So this year, we're we're progressing. The car has come along really well. It's a three car effort this year at Andre mm-hmm. for the Indy Lights team, and it's uh it's gone very well. We uh, the timesheets might not show it, but we found uh, we did our tire run early in the day and. Everybody else did their tire run later in the day when the track got faster. So we uh, we definitely feel like we have a, a competitive car. And unfortunately, the series kind of sprung a, a new one on everybody uh, in the past uh, month. They uh, put an update on the car that changed the uh, changed the car drastically. So teams are trying to catch up and and do as much testing as they possibly can. Uh, going into St. Petersburg this weekend uh, is our first race, so we'll kind of see who uh, who figured out the best uh, once we get down there. So who who is your teammates over there? Uh, this year I have uh, Dalton Kellett. He's in the number twenty eight car, and Dean Stoneman, who's in the twenty seven car. So how did you get hooked up with with the Andretti Autosport? I mean, you you've got to have a lot of talent to get hooked up with those guys. I mean, so how did you get involved with them? Uh, I just uh, I was racing Skip Barber uh, Racing School in their uh, national and and uh, regional series. And uh, I, Andretti's always been looking for new talent coming out of these lower level series, and I uh, was fortunate enough to get a contact in them, and and uh, they asked me to come test for them, and my tests went extremely well. And the next year, I started racing the USF 2000 with them, and kind of moved up from there. So, what is your what is your plans for the future? I mean, where where would you like to end up? I know you're probably going to say Indy, but is there any other Formula One or anything like that you would like to try? I mean, I'll drive. I'll drive literally anything. Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously, Formula One's high on the list. Uh, Formula One's kind of an unrealistic market nowadays. Uh, mm. The sponsorship dollars have got to be just absolutely astronomical um, nowadays for Formula One. But, yeah, IndyCar is what I'd, I'd like to do uh, next season uh, after the 2016 Indy Light season. Hopefully try to get into a couple, one or two IndyCar races this season. But, um, I mean, I'll drive anything. I'd be... Nice later on my career to try on NASCAR, and uh, I'll always be in road racing. That's uh, in the endurance series, like uh, IMSA, and uh, hopefully some WEC stuff. So it'd be uh, it'd be awesome. Uh, I'll drive anything as long as it has four wheels. <laughs> so, who do you go to for advice at at the at the racetrack? Uh, mainly, um, I have a I have a driver coach who I go to a lot. He's done a lot of uh, done a lot of good stuff. Uh, Darren Manning, uh, he's done a lot of IndyCar experience and uh, road racing experience, so I've, I've always got to him for advice. And just some of the older, the older guys that have been seen, like Michael Andretti and, and Mario Andretti, those are obviously two huge people to talk to. So they have yeah. a massive amount of uh, experience, and just some other guys like Dario Franchini and even the new guys mm-hmm. like James Hinchcliffe, they're always a big help. Um, and I've also have a couple friends that are factory drivers for bmw such as john edwards that i uh, get a lot of advice from so it's uh just kind of it's good to have friends kind of all over the board to get uh get some good advice when you need it now the the schedule you got this year is any of those tracks have you been to most of them or a lot of them going to be new for you uh pretty much all of them i've been to uh the only place that we don't know of yet is boston uh, Boston, I don't think it's fully uh, guaranteed yet, but it's on the schedule, so we'll see. But never been there. Um, everywhere else I've, I've pretty much been to, so uh, I've either had good experiences or bad experiences there. So I hope to make them all good experiences this year. Now, what what did your family think? Uh, you know, you, your family's from the, the, the country music side of the business. When you said you wanted to go race, and I can imagine they were like, what? Why? <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely a, it was definitely a talk, but once they uh, found out that I uh, everything driving related came pretty easy, just uh, understanding uh, the characteristics of making the car go fast and uh, just kind of how the business works is very similar to the music business. So once they kind of saw that I had a, a talent for it and uh, that was truly my passion, they were all for it. Now, is is your mother like any of the other racing mothers when she's out there? Uh, a little nervous about what you're doing and gets a little excited about it? Uh, nowadays, nowadays not as much, but yeah, she still, uh, she still gets pretty nervous uh, during the races. 
Now, do you do you get into the technical side of the car, or do you just worry more about driving, or do you you know do you get into what goes into it, what springs or, or adjustments are going oh, yeah. into the car? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's all it's always a big thing for the drivers to know. Uh, what the, what the changes do to the car and uh, just the characteristics of the car. I actually, when I uh, was driving in uh, Continental Tire, I worked in the Roush Performer or Roush Fenway racing shop. As I did a lot of things such as like uh, I did a uh, body hanging, which is basically put the bodies on the uh, the NASCAR uh, Cup cars and, and now Xfinity cars, uh, mm -hmm. fabrication, uh, transmission shops, and paint and body. So I did a. Uh, I learned a lot there. Uh, that was a lot of my education, of my college education, I'd call it. And uh, see, I know, I, I love working on cars, so I always know a lot about uh, what goes into making them go fast and actually what makes the car get on the track. Mm -hmm. But that's funny you say that, and I forgot that you said you drove for Roush, because Roush is very big on most of all his guys working in the shop and working on the cars. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it, it started out as... Uh, it started out as one driver just crashed a lot of stuff, and Jack Senior got so mad that he kept on getting his race cars crashed that uh, he made him go work in the shop and repair his own mistakes. And <laughs> you don't you don't crash as much when you know how much it goes into fixing it. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, are you living in the Nashville or the Charlotte area? I live in the Charlotte area right now. Okay, that's cool. Well, I mean, you know, to have the experience of being around the Ralph shop and everything. I mean, you mentioned earlier. That you you know you would be willing to drive anything is it and, and I'm sure this question is probably based on one of my other questions, but is NASCAR in your sights to maybe really get a shot at that? Yeah, absolutely. Eventually, in my career, I'd like to uh, like to give it a try. Uh, I've always I've always been fascinated with open wheel cars, and, and that's kind of why I chose Indy Indy car to be my main goal because uh, I think it I think Indy car is just the, the top of the the hardest uh, driver challenge because you have to be good at ovals, street courses, and road courses. Um, so that's the biggest uh, kind of thing that, that made IndyCar uh, uh, interesting to me. I mean, yeah, I'd love to try. I think NASCAR has some great races and great, uh, great racing styles, so it'd definitely be something I'd be interested in. Well, now, being in the Charlotte area, I'm sure you, you, you get to see a lot of the NASCAR people. Uh, have you made the, any discussions in trying to get, you know, get a test in one of the cars or anything no nothing yet no nah, some some stuff with roush they, they we talked about it but not for too long uh so yeah nothing nothing really yet mm -hmm. so what is your favorite racetrack so far Oof. that's a that's a big one probably uh circuit of the americas coda mm. or uh or the speedway the speedway uh at uh ims is a uh that's a that's a that's a place. That's for sure. Yeah. The speeds the speeds are ridiculous, and uh, you got to have a lot of respect for that racetrack. It's not as easy as people think. Yeah, I and mean, that whole place has just got a bunch of history there. So I mean, it's that's, exactly. I can imagine just going there and just kind of feeling that the the the, the rich history that that place has has got to be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean it's it's a little bit of everything. It's, it has rich history and a lot of. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, and people, a lot of people think it's like, well, it's, it's a big rectangle. I mean, it can't be that difficult, and <laughs> that straightaway into turn one, it looks like a uh, a hallway going into a mouse hole. So it's, it's definitely uh, it's definitely not an easy place to learn and master. I know it's funny to hear some people. I'm sure you probably run into that that you that you are a race car driver now, and that some people think it's very easy. You're like, what do you do? You just drive the car, right? That's all you do. Well, that's a lot more to it than just that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, what was it like when you walked through the gates there at, at Indy for the first time? I mean, that had that had to be that had to be a very nerve wracking thing. I mean, the first time I walked through the gates was uh, during the Indy 500. Uh, I think in 2000, 2000 actually, and it's, it's, I mean, it's something different. I mean, they even, even Kurt Busch, when he drove for Andretti, mm -hmm. uh, he drove, uh, he drove with Indy 500 uh, two years ago, and he said walking through Gaston Alley made the Daytona 500 look like a car break. He's like, it's something that every driver needs to experience in their life. It's something that, uh, I mean, it's special, it's different, it's, uh, it's a big honor to, to race there, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely the pinnacle of, uh, of racing. 
All right, now your your season opener is this weekend at St. Petersburg. Um, where else are what where where do you go after that, and what are some of the places that you're looking forward to getting to? Uh, right after uh, St. Petersburg, we go to the Phoenix Oval, uh, which nobody has ever raced there, so it mm. should be very very interesting uh, to go there and try to see how the cars race there. I mean, testing the cars are ridiculously fast. Uh, Indy cars are like low 19 second laps which are like eight seconds faster than a cup car out there so it's kind yeah. of uh that's crazy ridiculous yeah it's ridiculous to watch the cars go around at 190 miles an hour but uh we go there the biggest place uh place that i'm really excited for road america uh barber motorsports park where we tested that recently that's my home track and my, one of my favorite tracks and uh really the speedway getting back to the speedway and uh getting that experience again is uh is, is huge well, Shelby, we appreciate your time tonight. I know you got a lot going on, getting ready to go to St. Petersburg and everything. We appreciate your time. Yeah. I'm glad we finally got you on here because I've been really interested in getting you on. We like to do different forms of racing, so we really enjoy having you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right, well, we'll get you back on here again after a few races to see how things are going. Sounds good. Talk to you then. All right, man. Thank Talk you. to you later. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Bye. Yeah, I can imagine what his mom... His family did, you know, I mean, when they've been, their whole family's very, very successful in the country music. You got that right. I mean, I mean in all aspects, from the management to the singing. Uh, for, for those of you that don't know, his mother is Reba McIntyre. His father managed her career. Narvel Blackstock. His brother uh, is a manager and, and married to Kelly Clarkson, uh, you know, is, is her manager and married to her, and they're expecting their Second child. Second child, yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of family country music. I can't imagine going to his family and saying, you know, here, everybody's so successful, but I'm going to go over and go racing. Which, yeah. which uh, in the beginning, doesn't pay any money. It costs a lot of money, as of us that are in the business know. Uh, and I bet they were like, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, just, I mean, come out of nowhere and say, I mean, and, and a late part of the age for somebody to decide he, that they want to go racing. And he said he was a roadie for from ten years old to nineteen <laughs> years old. I mean, he's right there in the business, and he sees the business from that. And then you know they're thinking, well, he's going to eventually move into the other parts of the business. Mm -hmm. Well, that ain't happening. <laughs> no, <laughs> that ain't happening. But anyway, uh, that was a pretty good deal. I mean, I, I'm glad we got him on here and finally had a chance to talk to him. Yeah, I, I wish I knew a little bit more. I, I've just been so busy a little bit more about the any car lights and, and, and a little more well i didn't know a whole lot about it either but you know we we, we touched the surface of it a little mm -hmm. bit um, um we but none of those guys really none of those series come close to us so it's hard for us to kind of like go i know they had several years ago they run on the streets of of uh right up north uh, baltimore they did in baltimore yeah and they didn't come back the next year because I wanted to do. I wanted to go up there, and I thought it would be cool for us to go up. But they didn't bring it back. And then they did the indie races, the, the couple indie races at uh, Richmond. Richmond. But that wasn't, you know, that's. It, it, it's not. It doesn't do that well here. <laughs> no, it's not the same type of racing. That the and, and those here. guys are fast. I mean, they were going around uh, Richmond. At, I think they were about 19 seconds. I mean, a cup car is about, well, I don't know. They might have been faster than that. I mean, the race was over in no time. An open wheel car at, 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 at Richmond. Especially, what, how, what do you say they're running, 19 seconds at, at uh, Phoenix? Phoenix. So they, I mean, that's a mild, flat track. <laughs> and can you imagine Can you imagine coming off turn three like they do? And, and the, the cup cars have a hard time keeping it no. out of the wall there. No. They, those guys got to be right up against I mean, they've got to be thinking about it every time they come around. Yeah, so what do you say? They're nine seconds faster than a cup car? Or nine miles an hour? No, it's got to be more than that. More than that. I, he said nine something, and I didn't. Mm, but, I mean, that that's whew, that's crazy. All right, well, since we're, just, we're, we're running a little bit late tonight since we had a late call, uh, being as I was the, the worst one last week, I get to go first this week in our picks for this coming week at Phoenix. And uh, I don't know, did, uh, did Clayton ever send you anything? He did, but my phone is over there. Clayton, I know you're watching. Uh, you need to let us he, know. I think it was the 22. Oh, 22. He's taking the 22 unless he gets picked. 19 is his backup. Where you, 
Reese is supposed to be the last pick going, so you don't have to worry about him. Uh, man, it's hard. It's hard to, when you talk Phoenix. It's hard to go against Kevin Harvick at Phoenix. It is when the way he does the way he drives at Phoenix. It's, yeah, I mean it's that's I mean he's he's the cream of the crop there. So. Being that said, I'm going to do Harvick. <laughs> I was I was hoping I was last so I could so I could pick him. Um, well, you're next. You know, and the Penske cars have done well there. I think I'm going to go with Logano. Scott going with Logano. You know, this is kind of funny how this works out. Every week we pick the same people. <laughs> it's, it's a little different. <laughs> and uh, Clayton's taking Keselowski. And yeah. I think Reese told me he did. Let, let me go grab my phone. Well, I really don't care what Reese. He won this week. I really don't care what he thinks. Yo, oh, because his first pick was Harvick. I, and I was like, you won, you're going last. So I know it's, Harvick's not going to make it till you. <laughs> uh, so I was like, uh, you're going to have to give me somebody else because – Harvick. I know for a fact. Oh, he's going with Logano. Well, he's going to have to pick somebody else because I picked Logano. All right. Well, he'll just have to come up with him and let, it, let me know what what his pick is. He's last anyway, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, uh, Scott's got two wins this year. Reese has one. Uh, uh, three. Oh, that's right. You got three wins. That's right. You got the three. Reese knocked me off my pedestal. You I got thought for a minute I was going to get it again. I was like, man, if I could just make that four in a row. Yeah, you would have been. We wouldn't have been able to put up with you. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't have been able to do it. But anyway, we'll uh, got a good show next week. Um, pretty much lined up. I haven't verified. Make sure everybody's lined up. But uh, we're going to have Tiger Tom Pistone with us next week. Um, Casey Roderick, he's a super late model driver from down in Georgia. He was part of the Bill Elliott racing program mm -hmm. at one point. Then he went over to Phoenix racing, was in their development, and ran some uh, ARCA races and stuff for Phoenix and won a couple races. So uh, he'll be with us next week. And uh, Clayton said he gets so good with the 19. <laughs> Clayton. Clayton got Keselowski. He said 22 first. That's Logano. Oh, 22 is Logano. Oh. Okay. Keep him straight, Clayton. Keep him straight. You're right. I'm sorry, Clayton. I wasn't thinking very well. Say that again. So you're going with Carl Edwards. That's a new one we haven't had in a while. But anyway, um, I know we're going to have Tiger Tom Pistone with us next week. Lauren Rainier. Uh, uh, Lauren Rainier will be with us next week. Got to verify that to make sure, and Casey Roderick. And we may, we may, one way or the other, we're going to have uh, Tommy Baldwin come on too. So uh, he may be next week or the next week after that. I don't know how that will work out. But uh, anyway, we're going to have some good shows in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully we'll make it to South Boston this weekend. Yeah. And before we go, I want, I want to give our condolences and stuff to Dylan Brockwell. Um been a lot of people doing been hashtag Brockwell Strong, yeah. uh, a local dirt racer, um, uh, kind of up in the Richmond area. That that uh, we we talked about him last week, and, and sad to say that uh, I don't know any other good way to put it that that he didn't make it. Um, so we wish his family um, well, and 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 hopefully this doesn't happen again to somebody. Uh, kind of a strange ordeal but our thoughts and prayers go out to him i'm definitely going to get us a, a sticker and, and we'll put it on my i know we'll put it on my card or on my helmet from brock well strong so and we'll get a couple of them i like put one on my car on my truck because you know I, i've done that for a couple couple guys and uh, it kind of brings it gets, it gets a lot of attention when you go somewhere and you're sitting in like i was at uh one of the racetracks one time and i had um i forget who the kid's name was been about four or five years ago they passed away in a car wreck and and i had his sticker on there and a lot of people paid attention to it and then mm -hmm. what i understand a lot of people you know reached out to them and mm -hmm. made some donations or whatever too so when you see stuff like that I, you know i put them on my truck too and 
I think it's a big deal, and uh, I hate I hate that happened. And uh, yeah, I had a friend. My first uh, is, is kind of a funny story. This, this kid, uh, when I first started uh, helping some guys in the uh, nationwide series, then uh, his name was his name was Dirt, uh, and him and another guy got in a bad car accident, and and um, didn't survive. Him and a friend down in Charlotte. Uh, I forget who he was working for at the time. Well, when I first met him, it was his old country boy from Tennessee. And, and I said, so what's your name? He's like, Dirt. I was like, Dirt? He's like, yeah, you mix it with water and you get mud. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my first impression of him. Super nice guy. Probably one of the hardest workers in the garage. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, it just just reminded me of it. On a, on a little bit of a happier note, I want to wish uh, a good friend of mine or – We've known each other for a while, but not, I ain't gonna say we're good friends. But anyway, known each other. Well, known you've you known him. Yeah, I've known him, but he's known <laughs> it's me a one, too. It's a one-way friendship. He don't. He probably didn't remember me a lot. But Joe Huss. Well, Joe, Joe, Joe Huss. Happy birthday. What, um, what, was it I, don't, I, forget, I think it was. I think it was, but I. I ain't. I'm telling you. And you know what? To be his age, he's pretty active on Facebook. Oh yeah, because he's messaged me. But a I'm few not going to. Or said, "Hey, thanks, Scott." Or what? You know, he's always. Adding a comment on something, some of the stuff we post. Uh, so, I ain't, know, go, I ain't a, a local go, legend. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say nothing politics. I ain't gonna talk politics with him. <laughs> and I understand that that gets really heated if you start talking politics. Another guy, Cos Jackson, used to be the promoter of at Southampton Speedway. Uh, his birthday was this past week too, and I want to wish him a happy birthday. So, uh, uh, I talked to him from time to time, and uh, he was very instrumental in getting the Southampton Speedway started. He come and helped us out a lot when we got started. Uh, so, happy birthday to him. And, unless you got something else, that's pretty much it for tonight. I think that is it. I was just seeing, because there was a few people's birthday, and I think there's a couple people for tomorrow, tomorrow's birthday. Uh, Tate Fogelman, Jay Fogelman's yep. son, it's his birthday. And Joe has 79 years old. I just hope I can and make it that long. I gotta give my daughter will be twenty one tomorrow. Whew. So we're we're going out to eat tomorrow night. Ryan Gifford's birthday is tomorrow is Thursday. Twenty six years old. <laughs> You're old. I just thought about that. Dude. <laughs> and my buddy Josh Ayers, uh, he'll be his birthday. Happy birthday, to you guys, on Thursday. He'll be twenty seven. All right. Well, we'll see you next week. We'll have a good show next week, and we'll talk to you then. Bye, guys. Uh, Like and share our videos, please. Thank you.